What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this motherboard right here, which is Asus's ROG Strix B850A gaming Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now to start things out, this is an ATX motherboard and for color design, you can see that this is a white themed motherboard. Now ASUS has gone as far as making the actual PCB of the board white, which I think looks awesome. Your heat sinks primarily are going to be silver with white accents and you get a couple black accents throughout the board as well. But I think this is one of the best looking B850 motherboards out there. When it comes to the CPU socket, we of course have AMD's AM5 socket, and this is going to support Ryzen 9000, 8000, and 7000 series processors. Surrounding the CPU socket, we have our power delivery components, and ASUS is going with a 14 plus 2 plus 2 power phase design with 80 amp power stages and high quality alloy chokes. Covering the power delivery components are two silver heat sinks. Covering part of one of those heat sinks is going to be our rear I.O. cover, which really brings the top of the board together. It's all white and has an ROG logo on it, and the white actually gives a good contrast to the silver heat sinks. Hiding in the top corner of the board are your two 8-pin EPS connectors. By default, you only need one plugged in, but for higher end processors and overclocking, you want to plug both in for more stable power delivery. Moving across the top of the board, you'll find three 4-pin fan headers. The first two are your CPU fan header and AIO pump header, and the third is your optional CPU fan header. One nice thing is that ASUS has put covers on these if you aren't using them. Coming down to our DDR5 DIMM slots, these will support up to 256 gigabytes of DDR5 8000 memory. The slots don't have locks on the bottom, which makes swapping out your memory once you have your graphics card installed much easier. Moving over to the edge of the board, you'll find a three pin addressable RGB header, power button, 24 pin ATX power connection, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, and then coming down the board, there are two SATA 6 gig ports, which are set at a 90 degree angle, so they're not in the way of your expansion cards. At the bottom of the board, you'll find the rest of your headers and connections, which do include your front panel audio headers, two four pin fan headers, two three pin addressable RGB headers, a Thunderbolt header, another four pin fan header, two USB 2.0 headers, and another four pin fan header, as well as your front panel headers. The bottom half of the board is mostly made up of heat sinks, which are silver and have multiple ROG and Strix logos on them. The top heat sink is quite large and is made for cooling off a PCI Express 5.0 NVMe SSD. Now this large heat sink features what ASUS is calling M.2 Q release, and all you have to do is release this latch and then pull up and the entire heatsink comes off no problem. Putting it back on is just as easy. You kind of line it up, push it on, and then it's right in place. Now, if we remove it, we can see our top slot, which is a PCI Express 5.0 slot. And this slot, as well as the rest of the slots on the board, do make use of their M.2 Q latch. So, all that is, is this little piece right here that latches onto your drive when you press it down. So we put in our M.2, press it down, it latches into place, locks into place, no little screws or anything like that. You wanna remove your drive, you just press down on it and it pops back up and you're essentially good to go. Super easy to use and incredibly convenient. Removing two more heat sinks reveals the rest of the M.2 slots on the board. These final three slots are all PCI Express 4.0 they also feature M.2 Q latch, so installing your drives will be very simple. When it comes to expansion slots, there are only two PCI Express X16 slots. The top slot is going to be PCI Express 5.0, while the bottom slot is PCI Express 4.0 and is only X4 electrical. The top slot is also metal reinforced. Now, one thing you will notice on the board is that there's no button to release our top graphics card slot. It gets, you know, when you have big cards like this one here, you want a button or something to release your graphics card. You actually don't have one on this board. What ASUS has is what we saw on some of their other boards is their PCIe slot Q release slim. So if we put in our graphics card and just to show you that it's in there, I'm lifting up the board. Don't do this at home, but I'm lifting up the board. 
um, with our graphics card installed here. And again, if you have a button, it's kind of hard to press and, and things like that. What you do with PCIe slot Q Release Slim is you want to lift up the card this way. So this, this way, if I lift up the card, you know, again, I can lift it up, nothing's happening, but if I lift up the card again this way, it just releases. It, it works flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with it on the multiple boards that I've tested it on, but it just makes it so easy. Again, let's just do it one more time just to show you guys. Put in our graphics card, and again, we're lifting it up, our, you know, but if I lift it this way, it just, again, just comes off super easy to go ahead and do that. So it's one of my favorite features of this board. Finally, as we come to the rear IO, of course we have an integrated IO shield, which is white to match the board. When it comes to ports and buttons, we have DisplayPort, HDMI, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. One of these is type C, two USB 2.0 ports, a clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 type C port, 2.5 gig LAN, and your Wi-Fi 7 connectors, as well as your audio connections. When it comes to the Wi-Fi antenna, as you can see, it's white to match the board, which I absolutely love. And it does use their Q antenna connectors, which you can see right here. They're just simple connectors. So no more twisting or anything like that. All you do is just press them in and you're good to go. Super easy. And again, if you want to you know, disconnect them, you just pull them out. That's all, that's all you really have to do. Just makes this process so much easier. When it comes to RGB lighting on the board, all you're gonna get is this ROG logo right here on the rear IO cover. Of course, don't forget, you do have three more RGB headers on this board if you wanted to add more RGB lighting to your system. When it's all said and done, I think ASUS has put together a really feature-rich B850 motherboard here. The big thing is that you are gonna get Gen 5 support on that top graphics card slot, as well as that top M.2 slot. Talking about the M.2s, you know, you get a total of four, which is quite a lot for a board like this. So you could do a pretty storage heavy build if you wanted to. And essentially those M.2 slots are toolless. The bottom two heat sinks you have to take off, but installation of your M.2s is going to be extremely easy. Talking about, you know, ease of use, you have their graphics card release system, which is the best that I've seen. You essentially just pull the graphics card one way and it comes out, no buttons to press, no, no levers, nothing like that. Just makes it super, super easy. Moving on to connectivity, you have USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 support. So if you did have something like a super fast portable SSD, you're gonna get those speeds, which is great. And you get Wi-Fi 7. And again, those Wi-Fi 7 connectors, they're not the ones that you have to like twist in, you just press them in and you're good to go. And I love the attention to detail on the Wi-Fi 7 antenna. It's white to match the board. And again, that's one of the best things about this board is that it looks absolutely amazing. Like if you're doing a white build, this is gonna look excellent in your system. And the only downsides about choosing a B850 board over an X870 or X870E, your feature set is just gonna be a little bit less, right? So we have not as powerful as, you know, as, a VRM in one of those boards, which again, if you're running like a normal Ryzen processor, not doing any overclocking is really not gonna make a big deal. You're not gonna get USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. So those are the kind of things, like the big things to me that you're missing. But I think for the price, this is a really solid board. And if you're doing a Ryzen build, this is a board that I can definitely recommend. Now, I will have links below where you can go ahead and pick this board up. And if you have any questions about this board, leave it in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.